Well, thank you for joining Bethel Worship Assembly tonight for On Time Word. Of course, we was um, not on on last week, so we're gonna um, piggyback up piggyback on a little bit of what we talked about week before last what the Lord's put on put on my heart and actually I didn't God didn't gave me another direction to uh, uh to go um you know I had one thing I thought I was going one way and just getting on just now the Lord told me to go another way so he opened my eyes to something um just before we got on so um so I pray this word I know this word tonight will be a blessing to you well we thank you all that continue to pray for us and so into this ministry couldn't do it um, without you without your prayers or your financial support so we continue to pray that god blesses all who souls into this ministry um by now most of you are familiar with our cash app our venmo our zelle and our mailing address um, our venmo is bethel wm as well as well as our cash app bethel wam our Zelle is BWAEDV at BethelWorshipAssembly.org. And that mailing address is Bethel Worship Assembly 2616 Thornhill Drive, Evansville, Indiana. So thank you so much as you continue to support this ministry, as we continue to do what God has called us to do and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, to the world. So let's do our giving um, confession. So what if the Lord put on your heart um, tonight or tomorrow? Or, or next week, um, no, no amount is too small. We duly, uh, greatly appreciate it. And it's going um, to build the kingdom of God. So let's do our giving confession on tonight. One, two, and three. Upon the authority of your word, because I am a giver, I receive blessings from the open windows of heaven. I bring my tithe and my offering to your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked and the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out blessings upon me that there is not enough room to receive them. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid in full, debt demolished, and my entire family saved and walking with God. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out. I stand in perfect health and I walk in divine favor, abundance and increase. I am prosperous in all that I do and in all that I pursue in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. That again, that is such an awesome declaration to proclaim, to decree and to declare over your life. We worship God continually in our giving and out of our necessity. So let's pray. We're gonna pray over our, our giving tonight. Also, gonna pray uh, for the for the word, and we're gonna do our word declaration. We're gonna get into the word. Amen. So, Father God, we thank you, God, for this opportunity, God, for us as your people, your children, God, to come together corporately, God. Oh God, to just worship you, to get into your word, and this opportunity you blessed us, oh God, to sow and to give. Oh God, we thank you, Lord, oh God, that you, oh God, see our sacrifices, oh God, and even being on tonight, oh God, sacrifices, oh God, to be on to hear your word, oh God, to participate, oh God, to give, to listen, to hear, and to receive from you in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, we thank you that we're covered. The blood of Jesus covers us because we walk in obedience, oh God, to your word. We walk in right righteousness, oh God, we walk in holiness, God, and even when we fall short, God, oh God, we love you enough, we care about our relationship with you enough, oh God, to get it right with you each and every day, oh God, so hear our worship, hear our praise, hear our heart, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, so even your word, oh God, take your word, oh God, and impress it upon our hearts, oh God, embedded in our minds and our spirit, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word being an, an, an encouragement, we thank Thank you for this word, oh God, bringing deliverance. We thank you for this word, bringing revelation and insight, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, to our spirits in the name of Jesus. You know what we all stand in need of, Father. God, you know every heart, you know every concern, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God. So we love you tonight. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do through your word. God, is your word and you have your way. In Jesus' name, thank God. And amen, amen, amen. We're going to do our word, our word confession. We're going to get in this awesome word that God has given us on tonight. Amen. There is our word confession. Let's read it together. 
Lord, I want your word to challenge me, to change me, to convict me, and to make me more like you. One more time, let's read it together. Lord, I want your word to challenge me, to change me, to convict me, and to make me more like you. Amen. In Jesus' name, that's what it's all about, to become more like Christ each and every day. His word changes us, challenges and convicts us and make us more like Christ. Amen. Well, we want to uh, get into this word on tonight. As a Lord, I was going one way and he led me by the spirit to actually go another route. So I, the, I put on Facebook the topic our lesson tonight was a persistent faith. But the Lord changed that. He put it in my heart that he is a rescuer of all things. My goodness. He is a rescuer of all things. I usually try to read some scriptures and, you know, it's, it's kind of traditional to read your scriptures and give you your lesson or your subject. But I'm just going to look different on tonight as the Lord is leading me. He told me to tell somebody he is a rescuer of all things. And I was um, singing this little song by... Um, by the famous reggae singer uh, Bob Marley, um, all day to day. And I don't know who this is, is, is for. I, I know, uh, I believe it's Matthew. Um, turn to it before I say something to error. But I, this, this this little song has come to my heart. I've been just humming it just all day to day, and it's I believe it's in refuge in reference to uh, I believe Matthew six. This is not the lesson, but I, I was wasn't going to do this. But I don't know who this is for. And to our YouTube viewers, thank you for being on. Maybe for our, U, our YouTube viewer on tonight. But let me make sure I am going to talk about the right thing. Well, mention the right thing here. Yeah, so this little song is in reference to Matthew 6 and uh, verses uh, 20, 25 through 34. And this is a passage of scripture where Jesus is talking about, don't worry. And so the song by Bob Moore, I've been singing it all day and I don't know who this is for, but uh, you know, I mean, most of us know that song that says, don't worry about a thing. Every little thing is going to be all right. I've been humming that little, that little verse, that little lyric, all day today, it just, I forget about it. It comes back. I forget about it. And I, I said, Lord, I don't know if this is who this is for. I know this is for tonight. So I'm just saying this, you know, by faith and hopefully, hopefully this is for someone that's listening tonight or somebody that's going to listen on the YouTube channel or on tomorrow or whatever day. But the Lord has put that on my heart to tell somebody, whatever it is, don't you worry about it. Don't you worry about it because God got it. Every little thing, the big things, the great things, the small things, the little things, whatever is concerning you, God will perfect. Every little thing is going to be all right. This is my message to you. We know how the song goes. This is my message to you. Oh, man, I, I want to sing that song now. I'm going to try to let it go. Don't worry about a thing. Every little thing is going to be all right. Okay, let me go on. I don't know who that's for, but please receive that on tonight. Don't you worry about a thing. Every little thing is going to be all right. Boy, I wish I could just just sing that. I don't know the whole song. I would sing the whole song right now and call it a night. But anyway, let me move on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I'm going to start with... Um, Mark 9 is the Lord has uh, led me on tonight. No, I'll take the back. No, I'm going to go to Luke 11. Luke, the 11th chapter. And I'm going to start with verse 5. Verse 5. Luke 11, and it's going to be on the New King James Version. Luke 11, verse, uh, verse 5. And we're going to read it um, to verse 13. New King James Version, Luke 11, verse 5 through 13. And it reads, and he's, this is Jesus um, I'm using a parable talking to his disciples. He says, and he says to them, which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me on this journey and I have nothing to set before him. 
and he will answer from within from within and say do not trouble me the door is now shut and my children are with me in the bed i cannot rise and give to you i say to you though he will not rise and give to him because he is a friend yet because of his persistence he will rise and give him as many as he needs so i say to you ask and will be given to you seek and you will find knock and it will be open to you for everyone who asks receives and and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be open if a son asks for bread from any father among you will he give him a stone or if he asks for a fish will he give him a serpent instead of a fish or if he asks for an egg will he offer him a scorpion if you then being carnal some translation says evil actually new king james says evil but it means fleshly or carnal being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your heavenly father give you the holy spirit to those who ask of him so again i'm going to talk about tonight that god is the as a rescuer of all things i think about a year or so ago i think i shared this a few times on our bible study the Lord um, had put in my spirit that he's a healer of anything, that he's a healer of all things. And sometimes when we talk, when we think about healing, we think about it being physical, um, either within our bodies or on our bodies, as we need, to, we need to be physically healed. But he told me he's a healer of all things, whether it's emotional or, or, or mental from the past or whatever it may be, that he's a healer of anything and of all things. Well, tonight he told me to tell somebody on here that he is also a rescuer of all of all things and, and of, of anything. So this passage of scripture, this parable here, it deals with being persistent in faith. And again, I thought that was going to be our lesson tonight. I actually went on ahead and put it on Facebook about a persistent faith, because what Jesus is saying here, that who has a friend that comes and visit him in the middle of the night and he goes to his friend's house and asks um, for some food to set before his friend. And so the, the friend keeps the door shut and says, behind the door, it's late. My children are in the bed. I have nothing for you. I cannot rise and give to you. But Jesus said that, but that the friend rises and give to the man that's in need, not because he is his friend, but because of his persistence, because he stands there and continue to knock. Uh, and that's why the man received, not because he was just being annoying and, and knocking, not just because he was a friend, but because of his persistent faith to continue to knock at the door. And I, I, I know that that faith, uh, our faith at some, some points in our life, our Christian journey, our faith can, can be on a, a, a seesaw sometimes. Because as, as I said week before last, that our, our faith is sometimes challenged by the things that are tangible, our atmosphere, our environments. When God spoke to my heart last couple of, couple of weeks ago, and he told me that the most challenging thing to our faith is those things that are, that seem, that are logical and those things that are in our reality. But that's the battle that we have on the inside. We deal with logic. And we deal with our reality and those things are foes to our faith. If we can ever conquer our, our reality and conquer our logic to see them as our objects of faith and not our enemy to our faith, we'll start receiving and start experiencing more kingdom results. So I, I said week before last as well that we know we have a real enemy. The, the, the prince of this air, the prince of this world, but he's already defeated. God has given us everything that we need spiritually to defeat the enemy. So, but the real battle is our minds. The real battle is our emotions, especially when it comes to this thing called faith, because we are dealing with logic. We are dealing with what's real. We are dealing with reality. And so I always say that faith is not the absence of reality, but but faith is, is used as a, as a weapon of the to the object of our logic or our reality again remember when jesus said uh, to the disciples if you say to this mountain when jesus said to say to this mountain he had to point the mountain out 
they had to physically look and see that there was a mountain. And Jesus said, but if you say to this mountain, in, in other words, if you say to this object, if you say to, to this logic, if you say to your reality, whatever your reality may be, whatever you're facing right now, whatever you're going through right now, whatever it is, if you say something to it, it has to come into an agreement and alignment with God's word when you use faith and the authority of God's word. So he said, he said, if you say to this, this mountain, which is an object. And so our faith has to have objects. Our faith has to have reality um, to, to deal with. And our faith has to have logic to deal with. Because if there if there is no reality, if there's no logic, if there's no mountains and no valleys, there will be need, there will be no need for faith. If there's no dry places, no deserts, no hills to climb, there will be no need, no need for, for faith. And so so our faith has to have something to work towards. Our faith fights. The faith that we have is a fighting faith. We have a fighting faith. And then also our faith has to be persistent. We have to have a consistent and a persistent faith. But sometimes because of reality, because of challenges, because of the things that we know of, the things that are tangible, the things that we feel, the things that we hear, the things that we're going through, sometimes it can cause our faith to be on a seesaw. Because sometimes after a hot service on a Sunday morning, our faith is re restored and we are inspired to trust God for anything. But then when we get back to reality on Monday morning, when, re when we realize the logic now is kicking in and that our faith can begin to waver. And you will know what the Lord told me tonight. He told me that that's OK. Because we we are we are we are human, right? We do have to fight these emotions. We have to deal with logic, and we have to deal with our reality. And so, yet we want to be persistent in our faith, and yet we want to be consistent in our faith. That's what Jesus said in verse nine. He said, "He said, I say to you, it will be given to you. Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and it'll be open to you." So we got to keep seeking. We got to keep knocking. We got to keep believing. We have to. We have to keep. Uh, applying faith and applying the word of God. But sometimes, let, let me, let me uh, you know, I always raise my hand. I Sometimes I run, I have ran low on faith. I've, I've ran low on hope. Yep, 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 me, Apostle North, Lord, Apostle Latron North, I sure have. Sometimes I'm at the, at the, at the bottom of the barrel holding on to the little bit of hope and faith that I have left. And I don't know if anybody can be a witness with me right there that, that I'm holding on to the last scripture. I know the last, one of the favorite scriptures. I know how to quote. I'm holding on to it for dear life. And that's all I got left. I'm at the bottom. I've been at the bottom of a barrel with my faith. I've been at the bottom of the barrel with, with my hope. Sure enough, have and so I. But I found out that God is a restorer of anything and of everything, and especially when it comes to our hope and our faith. See, Jesus here is talking about being persistent and being consistent in our faith. But what do we do? What happens when we hit when we hit a certain of time frame in our life, when we come to a certain place in our life, and we get with hit when we get hit with something so great that it starts to stagnate our faith, that it starts to deplete our hope because of the situation, the circumstances that we are now facing, that we are now in. Do God just turn his back on us because we're wavering in our faith? Do he say, Oh, you still don't have it together and leave us in the corner? Uh, 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 all isolated and alone because we've got a little weary in our faith. No, I, I, I love God for so many reasons, but but one of the reasons I love God so because the, the character that He has is He doesn't condemn, and He's a righteous judge. That that when when that when I'm not perfect and when my faith is weary, when my faith is weak, He knows what to do and He knows what to say. Every single time he knows how to get his people back on track. He knows how to fill us again. He knows how to touch us again. He knows how to restore our joy. He knows how to restore our hope. He knows how to restore our peace. He's just uh, he's just so masterful and then restoring his his people. And so when we do get weary, when we do get tired and when our faith is starting to waver, he don't quit on us. He don't walk away and leave us 
uh, uh, like he like 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 he found us. He don't he he don't he don't uh, uh, abandon us. He don't neglect us when he when he knows that life now has thrown this curveball. Life has has hit us hit us with this and and a that. And so now our faith we we lose our persistency and our consistency now in our faith. He just don't leave us down and out. He don't leave us trying to figure out how to get back to him. He don't leave us in a place where we're struggling to try to believe again. He don't leave us like that. He don't, because some people, some people that that I that I have been acquainted with and throughout my life, that as long as I had it going on and as long as everything was all right, everybody was classified as a friend. But when, but when it start, but when the ship got rocky in the sea, and when things started not looking so good for me, I turned around. The same ones that said they was with me, never leave me, always be there. But they seemed now my life taking a different turn. Things wasn't things wasn't looking so good. Now those same individuals, even now, are nowhere to be found. But Jesus is I'm trying not to preach. Jesus is that brother that is, is so close to you and I that will never walk away. That's why he's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. And he's everywhere at the same time and, and in everything. When you're lonely, guess what? He's there. When you're tired, guess what? He's there. And when your faith is even wavering, he's there. And even when we have lost our persistency and lost our consistency in our faith, guess what? He is still there. That's why he said, I will never, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you even to the end of this world. So, so God is always there, no matter what we feel in, no matter what our reality says, and no matter how sometimes we deal with our reality and the things we go through in this life. God is there. When you're full of faith and, and you're so excited to read your Bible, he's there. And, but then, and those moments where you don't know what to say, you don't have the words to pray, guess what? He is still there. When you, want to, when you feel like raising your hands on a Sunday morning, he's there. When you don't feel like raising your hands and you don't know where God is and you can't, you can't even get your, yourself to get into the praise and worship, guess what? He is still there. Woo! Why? Because the Bible says he looks beyond all of our faults, and yet he still meets every one of our needs. I thank God that he is a consistent God, a perfect God, a holy God, a God that doesn't condemn, a God that doesn't judge, but he looks on the inside. He sees what he has already put on the inside of us, and he knows what to do to get that out. And so he doesn't abandon us and neglect us just because we having a woe is me moment, just because we, we sad right now. He does not walk away. He's there right there in it. And so, but Jesus here, he's talking about a, a persistent faith. But what happens, but what happens when uh, we lose uh, faith and when we lose hope. Is that possible? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. It's possible. I raise my hand. I raise it again. Yes, that's possible. You know, to, to lose hope and to lose sight of faith and for your faith to get weary, for your faith to, to go back and forth and you lose that, that persistency and that consistency consistency in, in faith. You know, and a, a lot of people believe because, you know, because we Christians and we confess salvation, we, 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 you know, in, in his word that, that there should ever, there should never be no doubt. There should never be no weariness. We should never get tired. We always should feel our help and feel like going on with the mighty burner fire. That hadn't been me. That has not been me. No, I, no, sir, no, ma'am. There on my Christian journey, I've experienced my fire going out. Talk to him. I have I have experienced not wanting to go on. I experienced saying, "Lord, I can't do this." I've experienced, Lord, I I, I can't do. I don't want to do this, Lord. I've experienced you feeling isolated, abandoned, and neglected. Even asking God, "Where are you, Lord? You don't left me." Then why this and why that done? Have the T-shirt, CD, and the tape deck for all of that. Been there, done that. So yes, it's possible. You may not, you may not have ever had that experience. Maybe you've always just been full of faith every day of your life since you've been saved. Maybe you never, ne never got weary or tired. You maybe never asked God, you know, Lord, where are you? But let me tell you something. I have. So, so there is times as children of God that we can get weary, and we lose sight of our hope and and our faith. 
And so I want to pick back up where I kind of left off last uh, week before last, when we went to Ezekiel 37. Last week before last, we talked we, we talked about um, having having that faith of that 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 speaks regardless of. To, to speak and to speak and regardless of what your reality is, what logic says, to continue to proclaim the word of God. And so we went to Ezekiel 37 and we talked about where God told Ezekiel in verse four to prophesy to dry bones, to prophesy to dry bones. And God asked, God asked Ezekiel, he asked Ezekiel, uh, can these son of man, can these bones live again? And Ezekiel's, Ezekiel's reply to God said, Lord, only you know. And so God replied to Ezekiel, told him, well, to prophesy, begin to prophesy to these dry bones. And so when we look at this passage of scripture, where we left off at, we will find for, in verse 7 and 10, when Ezekiel began to prophesy to these dry bones, that they begin to live again, uh, even the uh, flesh and, and organs and, and skin begin to begin to come back on these dry bones um, in, in, in this vision. And so they the Bible says that, that, that they even stood after they all came together and, and received the breath of life, the spirit of God, um, th that these dry bones, that they, they stood before um, Ezekiel. And so I want to now drop down, uh, which I'm going to Ezekiel 37 and 11. I'm going to pick up from there. Again, verse 7 and 10 is where the uh, dry bones came came to life. But I want to pick up uh, there here in verse 11, Ezekiel 37, verse 11. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. That's the part I was trying to uh, get everybody to see where I was. And I don't know about you, but I have said, Lord, my hope is gone. Oh, let me, I'm just being transparent. Just, I'm just trying to be real as possible tonight. But they have said our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Verse 12, Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says, my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. I will settle you in your own land then you will know that I, the Lord, has spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. Hallelujah. When, when faith, I talked about a week before last, when faith is released in, in, the, in the atmosphere, uh, we know that something has to happen because God has to honor his word. God has to honor his word. So when faith is released, we can just stand in expectation for God to move according to our faith. But I see here, well, a few weeks ago, I talked about uh, in Bible study lesson that whether if it's a tomb or, a, or an empty womb, uh, a pit, den, dungeon, a cave, to God, it does not matter. And now we see here that even the, the, the people of Judah, they are now uh, in exile in Babylon. They're in exile in, in Babylon. And so God hears their cry. They're saying that our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. And so God here releases a word of restoration and life and hope to them. The, the dry bones is a reference um, to these that are in exile in Babylon. It's a reference to how they feel. In other words, saying that our, our, our dry bones, our bones are very dry. In other words, there is there is no no flesh. There is no vital organs, um, in, you know, on on us enough to even to be revived, restored. In Luke, in Luke ten, I believe that's the, the parable of the Good Samaritan. The Bible says that after the, the the man who came down from Jericho, that he was that he was after he was beat up, he was left half dead. 
He was left half. That means he had somewhat of a pulse so he could be restored back to life. But here, here, those in exile are saying that they are that they are are are, are so or are so all they feel like they're so dead that to the point that they are, are just dry bones, that there is there is no half dead, there is no pulse, there's no flesh, there's no organs, that they actually have been dead for a while, and they and now they are just a carcass, everything has decayed. Also, they so they are they're actually are alive and living, but just in exile in Babylon. But the way they feel on the inside, that they are now old, they're decaying. There's no hope. There's no hope for restoration. Everything has been cut off. They're they're cut off from Judah. They cut off from everything they know. They feel like God has God has abandoned them. God has left them. They feel like there's no hope for restoration. There's no hope for deliverance. So they so they make the reference of our bones are dried up. There is no no possible way that we can come back to life because our bones are that dry. So so God right here, the Lord told me to tell somebody that even he that uh, not only is here restore of joy and, and, and healing, healing our physical bodies and healing our healing our mind and and he, giving us peace. But he, he, he but he is also even the restorer of our hope. Woo! And I'm so glad that he is. Because I'm, I'm telling you, when I was down to the to the crumbs of faith, when I was down to the to the to the crumbs of my hope, it was nothing but God, His Word, and the Holy Spirit that spoke life back into me again. And I just want to speak life into someone that's on here right now. That you may you may be feel you may feel like that you're in a dry place. You may feel like that like. You may feel like that you are in a barren place and everything is dried up. You feel like all hope is how hope is gone, that you that you are in an unfamiliar place. Oh, my goodness. That you are that you're in a place of exile where there where there is the, an uh, uh, unfamiliar place, a place of uncertainty, an uh, uncomfortable, uh, uncomfortable place, a uh, undesirable place, because it's it's one thing to know the expiration date. My goodness. It's one thing to know when something is going to get better. It's one thing to say, if I can just get to Friday. It's one thing to know uh, when when something's going to turn around, but not to know. The not knowing is what gets us. We don't know when exile is going to end. We don't know when the uncomfortable place is going to come to an end. We don't know when the hurt is going to end. We don't know when complete healing is going to happen. So we're in a place of uncertainty, an unfamiliar place, an uncomfortable place. And this how this is how the those that, that are in exile and but Babylon, this is how they felt. But they was cut off from normalcy. Nothing is normal. They're in a foreign place. They have no clue, no idea if they would ever be restored they felt like that restoration was so far away that they that they was they was living but yet was dead they was walking around with, with, with natural life in their body, but they felt like that they was already dead. I don't know if anybody have ever, ever experienced like, like driving and you're going through a, you're in a period of time in your life where you're going through some things in your mind and just on a thousand things at one time and you happen to be driving and you realize that you didn't even know how you got from one red light to the next. Um, I'm just I'm just by myself tonight. You don't even know how you got from one block to the next. You know how you got from one stop sign to the to the green light. Your mind is just just gone. You just you just you just you're you you you're alive, but your mind is absent. So you're present in body, but absent in spirit. You're present. You're present in body, but absent in mind. Oh, good God Almighty. I've been there. I'm telling you, my Lord, I'll be driving somewhere and thinking about this and that and that and this problem and that problem, this reality of issues, this reality of issues, and just driving. I look and say, Lord, how in the world did I end up here? Don't recall going through red lights. Don't recall stopping at stop signs. Don't recall making a left or right. Good God Almighty, present in body, but absent in mind and spirit. This is where these are in exile. This is where they are. They're present in body, but they're absent in hope. Woo, 
glory. They're present in body, but absent in faith. They're present in body, but yet they feel like they cut off from the glory of God. They feel like they cut off from his joy. They feel like they cut off from his presence. And I know, I know I'm talking to somebody unless I'm just talking to myself and that's fine too. I felt like, Lord, I'm just, I'm by myself. I don't even know where you, I feel like I'm cut off from your presence. I feel like I'm coming, I'm cut off from your strength. I cut off, I'm cut off from your joy. I'm cut off from your, can't even pray right. <laughs> Good God of mine. Can't even pray right. Don't have the words to pray. Don't have the words to think. Can't call a scripture, can't think of a scripture because I feel like I'm just cut off. Ooh, glory to God. But he told me to tell somebody tonight, looking at this passage of scripture, that even when you don't have the strength in yourself to get back in the place of faith, that even when you don't have the strength for yourself to get back to that place of joy, that even when you don't have the strength to believe and to have hope, God said, I'll restore it. I'm a restorer of everything. If you need your hope restored, I'll do that. Good. God Almighty. If you need your faith restored, I'll do that. I will never leave. I'm not going to leave you faithless. I'm not going to leave you hope without hope. I'm not going to leave you abandoned. I'm not going to leave you in distress. I am the restorer of everything and anything that you need. If it's hope, guess what? I'll restore you in hope. If it's faith, I'll restore you in faith. Because look at this passage of scripture in verse, this scripture here in verse 11. God knows how they feel. He says, then he said to, said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, whoo, hallelujah. God knows the way they was feeling. God is telling Ezekiel, this is what they're saying. Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. Hallelujah. Let me tell somebody, God knows how you feel. And that's just, that is okay. Don't, don't let re religious spirits and traditional spirits condemn you about how you, how you are feeling because God knows how you are feeling. God told Ezekiel, they are saying our bones are dried up. There's no, no, there is no potential of life. There's no potential of restoration. There's no potential to be restored. Our faith is dried up. Our hope is dried up. Our peace is dried up. Our joy is dried up. And also we feel like we are cut off. But look what he says in verse 12. He said, therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says to this people. I'm going to open up your graves and bring you up from that place. Woo, hallelujah. I'm going to bring you back. I am going to restore. Somebody ought to take the time and clap your hands. God, you are going to restore me. You are going to restore me. If it's my faith, Lord, restore it. If it's my hope, Lord, restore it. If it's peace, Lord, restore it. If it's joy, Lord, restore it. He said in verse 13, then my people will know that I am the Lord when I open up your graves and bring you up from that place. Bring me up, Jesus. Woo, glory to God. Don't leave me. Don't leave in this barren place. Don't leave me without faith. Don't leave me without hope. Bring me up, Jesus. Glory to God. Bring me up to a place where I believe again. Bring me up to a place where I can worship with a pure heart. Bring me up to that place where I can focus. I can, I can have my mind. I can be in body and in mind. I can be in body and in spirit. Bring me up from that place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I, I don't want to talk to people that they always got it right all the time. They always on fire. They they, they, they never have a bad day. Nothing never hurts. No problem. They, it's always, the sun is always shining. No, I want to talk to some people tonight that, that has asked the question, or they may be asking the question right now. Lord, I feel like I am cut off. I don't know how, I don't know if I can, should keep praying about this same thing. I don't know if I should keep believing about this same thing. I've prayed about this one issue time and time again. I don't do, I just let it go. Do I just leave it alone? Well, maybe it's just not going to happen. Oh, glory to God. Maybe it'll never happen. Maybe I need to just stop praying that because maybe it's just not going to happen. Maybe it's just not going to come to pass. Maybe that's for everybody else and not me. Maybe it's for the neighbor across the street and not for me. Oh, glory to God. Maybe it's for everybody else, but maybe it's not for me. Maybe that's just not my assignment. Maybe that's just not my lane. Maybe I should. Maybe it's not for me to be blessed like that. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. God wants you to be restored in your hope and in your faith. And the spirit of God, hallelujah, is going to restore your hope 
and and your faith. He says in verse four, he said in verse 14, I will put my spirit in you and you will live. I'm trying hard right here, y'all. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Woo, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, that's restoration. That's restoration where he's talking about taking those that are exiled, those of, of Judah, and putting them back into their rightful place. You belong in your rightful place. You belong blessed. Oh, take your time. You belong blessed. You belong prosperous. You belong in peace. You belong in joy. That is your rightful place. Oh, hallelujah. You belong in a place of healing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That is your rightful place. That's where you belong. Then the Lord says, then you then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and I have done it, declares the Lord. Let me tell you something. When God says it, you can bank on it that it's done. If it's in the word of God, hallelujah, you can, you can know that it's done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that's how we build up our hope and that's how we build up our faith and we go back, get in his word and we see what God is saying. This is what God is saying about you on tonight for your for your hope to be restored and for your faith to be restored because the Lord your God has spoken. Your Lord, your, the Lord your God has declared it. The Lord your God has done this. And if God said he has done this, guess what? It's already done. Hallelujah. Let me clap my hands for you. Let me clap my hands for you that it's already done, that you, that you are filled with hope again, that you believe again, that you're standing on God's word again, that your faith is touched, your faith is renewed. Let the breath of God touch your hope. Let the breath of God touch your faith. Let the breath of God touch your spirit and cause you to believe again, to stand on his word and to know that the Lord your God, he has spoken it, declares the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, this is a prophetic word, word on tonight, that it don't matter where you are. It does not matter where you feel. It doesn't matter how you feel about your situation. It doesn't matter how you feel about yourself right now, because all it is is feelings. And guess what? God specializes in everything. He specializes in, in regulating our emotions. He specializes in regulating our feelings. That's why he told Ezekiel, I know what they're saying. They're saying their bones, they said they're 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 they are just dead. They, their bones are just dry where, where, where life cannot, where they cannot experience life anymore, that their hope is gone. Again, God knows how we are feeling. He knows how you feel, but he don't want us to stay there in our feelings. No, that's why he said, I will bring you up from that place. I'll bring you up out of that grave. I will bring you up to a place of restoration. I'll bring you up where you can not just smile on the outside, but also have a smile on the inside. I will bring you up from that place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'll bring you up from that place where you're where you feel like there is uh, no hope, all hope is lost, where you are barren, there's no fruit, you see no fruit, you see no signs, and that's where that's our reality, because we don't see it like, we don't see that it's going to change, we don't see it get any better, but we do see it getting worse, oh my God, we do see it getting worse, we don't see it getting better, but, but we see it getting worse, and then that's when we say, Lord, all hope is lost. Lord, I'm just dried up. My prayer life is dried up. I, I'm everything is just just dried up. I don't know what else to do. Don't know what to say or pray. But God had me to tell you tonight that He is sending the Word. He's sending His Spirit that's going to revive your hope and going to revive your God, revive and restore your faith in the name of Jesus. I'm gonna read this last passage of Scripture and let God's people go. Mark 9, verse 14 says, And when Jesus, when he came to his disciple, he saw a great multitude around them and the scribes disputing with, disputing with them. Immediately, when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him, greeting him. And he asked the scribes, What are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowd answered and said to the teacher, I brought you my son who's a mute, who has a mute spirit. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth and gashes at, at his teeth, in his teeth, and he becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him 
to him, brought the son to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him. He fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. And he asked his father, how long has he been? How long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can, but if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe all things or possible to him who believes. Immediately, immediately the father cried out with tears, said, Lord, I believe. He cried out with tears and said, Lord, I believe. He cried out with tears and said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw the people come, came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you to come out. There's an uh, there's an uh, another translation when when the man says, Lord, I believe help help my unbelief. Jesus replies and says, only believe, o only believe. And so th the point I want to leave with you all on tonight is that this this man who brought his son to his disciples for help for his son to be healed. The disciples couldn't do nothing for the son. So now the man is disappointed. So so now here's an emotion of disappointment. So the, so the father says, Lord, I believe, but now you have to have my unbelief because what I was believing for, I'm now disappointed. I'm, I'm now experiencing disappointment because what I was believing to happen to your disciples did not happen. And so now you see, you see the break of his faith. You see the break of his faith. He said, I believe, but now you got to help my unbelief. And so now, now, so now that where be, where he did believe, he now is struggling in his belief because he was just disappointed. And I don't know, I don't know, man, I'm just, maybe I'm just preaching to myself tonight. Has anybody ever been disappointed, even through it, even by even you believing? You know, you you, you believe in God for one thing. You, you have you have faith, and you believe in and you trust in God. But the opposite happens. The same thing you believe in God for, it it, it seems like it backfires. It seems like it gets worse. Woo, good God Almighty. The same thing you believe in God for, it seems like it gets worse or or, or, or or just don't happen at all. And so so now what do we do? We become, if we're human, if we're human, right, we, we become disappointed. So this father, now he is dealing with disappointment. He says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And I like the other translation where Jesus replied to the man. He said, he says, only believe. On, only believe. And so God, it's amazing how Jesus didn't rebuke the man because he said, help my unbelief. Jesus goes ahead and heals his son. And in the other translation, it says, Jesus said, only believe. Oh, I'm so glad Jesus is who he is. I am so glad that when we are disappointed, that we, when we are let down, when our emotions start running amok, Jesus still, Jesus is still there. Jesus still cares. He tells the man to bring uh, to bring his son to him, and Jesus get everything that's happened, what's going on, and Jesus asks the question, "How long has he been like this?" Because now Jesus is getting the getting the father to understand, to bring it back to his his remembrance, how long he has been in this situation, dealing with his son like this. And I know some of us on here right now, you have a situation that you've been in for a long time and you feel like, Lord, I might as well just start praying about this right here. Oh, glory to God, because it's been like this for a long time. But I'm here to tell you tonight that if you can be like this man, the Lord, I got to admit that every now and then doubt creeps in. Lord, I might even right now, Lord, I have a little doubt in my heart. Lord, I, I want to believe, but God, you have to help my unbelief because it's been like this. Oh, good God Almighty. It's been like this for a long time, and I don't know what else to do. Ooh, but that's a good place when we ask God to restore our hope and to restore our and to restore our faith. I like how the man said, He said, Lord, I'm trying. I believe, but now into a I'm in a place now where my faith has just been damaged. 
Anybody have experienced your faith being damaged? Oh, glory to God. Anybody on here have experienced your hope being damaged? And guess what? That's okay because God specializes. Not only does he specializes in wounds and tombs and pits, dens, dungeons and caves, but he also specializes in restoring and in healing our doubt and our unbelief that creeps up every now and then. Oh, glory to God, because we do get weary at times. Our, our our faith does dwindle at times, but he don't cast us off. Oh, hallelujah. He looks beyond our disappointment. He looks beyond our ups and our downs and our inconsistencies, and he still comes to our rescue. And I thank God he has come to my rescue every single time doubt has crept in my heart. Every single time faith starts slipping out of my hands, he comes to restore my faith and my hope in him and what I believe in God for every single time. Hallelujah. So God had me to come on here tonight and tell you tonight to be restored in your hope, to be restored in faith and let the spirit of God restore you in your hope and in your faith. And even after you, even if you have to do like this man did, his father did, Lord, I believe, but God help my unbelief. It's okay to say that too. Woo, hallelujah. It's okay to be real good because we're in this personal relationship with God. He's our friend. He's our, he's our father. He's our brother. He's our mother. Whatever we need him to be, he is. And so one thing I love about the Lord, he, he, he knows how to keep a secret. Oh, I can go now. He knows how to keep a secret. He, you can tell him how exactly how you feel. And guess what? It's just between you and him. If you, you ain't got to tell me that, you don't have to tell me tonight that yeah, you have some doubt in your heart right now. You, but you sure can tell God. You can tell God, yeah, I'm losing hope, Lord. You don't have to be honest with me tonight. You don't have to tell me. I don't have to know, and I don't need to know. But you can show to be transparent with the Lord. You can tell God exactly how you feel and watch the Lord come and come and rescue you, rescue you, rescue you, rescue your hope and rescue you in your in your faith. Because guess what? It's impossible to please God without faith. But even when, but even when our faith is dim, He still comes to rescue us. <laughs> In spite of God wants us to have faith, and He wants us to believe. But there are all those moments in life that we said, "Lord, help me! I'm in my unbelief right now. Help, Lord! I don't know what else to do or say right now. I don't have the words for right now." Guess what? God knows that, and guess what? God is prepared every single time. It's nothing that you're in that we're going to face, that we're going to go through, that not that God is not prepared to handle. Ooh, he knows He knows when hope is getting ready to slip out your hand. He knows when doubt is getting ready to creep in. And guess what? He's already prepared. He already knows what to do for you. He already knows what to say to you. He knows how he's going to restore you. He knows how he's going to renew you. He knows how he goes, he's going to revive you. He's going to take those old bones and bring them to them and give them life. Oh, hallelujah. I feel somebody's hope coming to life, somebody's faith being restored and revived. Hallelujah, glory to somebody's joy being rekindled, renewed, and revived. So be restored on tonight. Let the Spirit of God touch your hope and touch your faith on tonight. Let God breathe in you because he is the restorer of anything and all things. If it's your hope, let him restore it. If it's your faith, let him restore it. If there's a little doubt, let him heal it. Ooh, a little unbelief, let him touch it. Oh, he's able. All I'm all I can tell you tonight that he's able, according to his word. He said, The Lord has done this, and this was the and this is what the word of God declares, and let it so be done unto you. That the restoration is coming, that what you that what belongs to you is coming back to you. Oh, glory to God. If you don't receive nothing else, receive that on tonight. That what belongs to you, that what, what you have allowed to slip out of your hand because of despair and worry and anxiety, that God's going to bring you back into that place of restoration of what's already yours. It's yours. It belongs to you. Hallelujah. It's yours and it belongs to you. Peace is yours. Joy is yours. Healing is yours. It's already yours in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. So I pray on tonight that your hope and your and your faith in God is revived and restored. And let, if it needs to be touched, 
Let God touch it on tonight in the name of Jesus. So God, we thank you on tonight, God, for your word. We thank you, Lord Jesus. So God, you know, oh God, everything about us. You, God, you know where our hope is right now. You know where our faith is right now. You know the things that we're concerned about. You know the things that we are worried about. Oh God, but you said in your word that you will perfect those things that concerns us. Oh God, you know, God, oh God, that every now and then, oh God, we get we become inconsistent in our faith. You want us to be persistent. You want us to be consistent in our faith. But every now and then, God, unbelief can creep in. Every now and then, God, doubt takes its hold. Every now and then, we can feel like, oh, God, there is no more life left. We're just old, dried up bones. We've lost all hope, and we are cut off. Ooh, glory to God. But we thank you, God, that you don't leave us there. You don't leave us feeling the, in the place feeling like we're cut off. You don't leave us in the place of hopelessness. You don't leave us in the place of, oh God, of having no faith. You know how to come and rescue us right where we are. So rescue us, King Jesus, right where we are on tonight. God, thank you, Lord, that somebody needs to be rescued in their hope and somebody needs to be rescued in their faith in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God. Oh God, just just like you gave Ezekiel the vision of you breathing the spirit of life upon dry bones, and they became, oh God, living beings. Breathe on our hope tonight. Breathe, oh God, on our faith tonight. Breathe, oh God, upon our trusting in you on tonight. Breathe, oh God, that we'll believe you, God, like never before in the name of Jesus. So God, reestablish our hope. Reestablish our faith, God, in the name of Jesus. So God, let it be done. Let it be done, oh God, to the point, Father, that we look at our dry places. We look at the mountain and the valleys and the hills and we speak life. We speak life, oh God, because we have been renewed in our hope and we have been renewed and revived, oh God, in our faith in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. We live in you, God. We live in you. We live in hope. We live through our faith. For your word says the just shall live by faith, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. And we're just not living, God. We're just not alive, oh God. We're not just present in body body and absent in spirit. We're not just present in body and absent in mind, oh God. No, we're whole. We're whole on tonight. We are whole, God. We have peace, oh God. We have healing in our bodies, healing in our mind, God. We, Oh God, we are restored in our spirit. We are revived in our joy in the name of Jesus. We are made whole on tonight, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. So we thank you, God, for breathing your fresh wind and your fresh fire, your spirit upon us, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you. We are restored in the anointing. We're restored in your power. We are restored in your spirit in the name of Jesus. We're not dried up. We're not done yet. We're not cut off, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we're not finished yet. It's not over, God, until you say that it's over in the name of Jesus, oh God. So we still hope, we still believe in the God who, who specializes in doing the impossible. You are specializing, oh God, oh God, and causing, oh God, water to fill a desert, to cause water to fill God, a low valley in the name of Jesus. And God, we believe on tonight. We thank you, God, by faith that we are restored and we are being restored right now. We are being restored right now. Our faith is being renewed right now. Our spirit, our fire is being rekindled right now in the name of Jesus. Only like you can do it, God. Only like you can do it. Oh, God, you know how to, God, to eradicate, oh, God, depression. You know how to get rid of doubt. You know how to dismiss fear. You know how to dismiss, oh, God, being afraid in the name of Jesus, oh, God. You are restoring right now. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. We see you reviving. We see you moving. We see you doing a refreshing. Woo, hallelujah. Refreshing, God. Rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Flood our souls, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, even though God, those, oh God, that feels like there's no hope, feels hopelessness, God. Oh God, you are the restorer in that place in the name of Jesus. And so we thank you, God, that you are tonight restoring everything, that you are restorer of everything and all things, even if it's our hope, even if it's our faith, you'll restore that too in the name of Jesus. So we thank you tonight, God. We thank you tonight, God. Hallelujah. We thank you tonight, God. 
for restoring us, oh God, back into our rightful place. Everything that belonged to us, God, we take it. We grab it, God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God. We allow you, God, to move us back, oh God, to that place, oh God, where we should be in the kingdom of God and in you and in your spirit in the name of Jesus. So, God, we give you glory. We give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Thank God, thank God, thank God, and amen, and amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Well, I pray this word on tonight bless you. I pray that um, this word has touched your soul and your spirit. That you say that you say to yourself, you know what? Touch me again, God. Ooh, hallelujah. That's all we that's all you that's all we're saying. That's all we're saying tonight. It's touch me again, revive me again, renew me again. Oh, hallelujah. Restore my hope. Stir up the gift that's on the inside. Okay, I got to go now. I got to go now. Stir up the gift. Stir up the spirit of God. Stir up that hope that resides on the inside of you. Oh, the Lord just told me, oh, hallelujah. He just put this in my spirit. He said, yes, I'm going to do it. Oh, good God Almighty. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I don't know who that one's for. He said, yes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to arrange it. Let your hope be re be reestablished. Let your faith be renewed. He just dropped it in my spirit. Yes, I'm going to do it. Oh, good God Almighty. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, God. Yes, I'm going to do it. I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is, but he's going to fix it. He's going to arrange it for your good. Bless the name of the Oh, thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Let your hope be stirred up and be filled with faith. Be filled with faith. I'm telling you, God is going to do it. Oh, this is the message of hope tonight. This is the message for your hope and your faith to be renewed and to be revived in the spirit of God. The, go back to Ezekiel 37 and, and 13 and 14, where he says, the word of the Lord has been spoken. I have spoken it and I declare it, says the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. The word of the Lord has been spoken. He has said it. He has declared it, says the Lord. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. All right. I can keep going because I'm talking about hope in the Lord. So I pray again this word bless you. I pray you go forth and that your faith and your hope has been restored. Allow the spirit of God to restore your hope and to restore your faith. Even if even if you have to be like that father, Lord, I got a little unbelief. It's okay. That's between you and God. But watch God heal it because he is the healer of all things and he is the restorer of anything. Oh, hallelujah. All right. I love you. But like we always say, the God who is restoring your hope and restoring your faith loves you so much more. So we look forward to it.